Um, what would you say is the first one? Yeah, let's go for this one. This is a bit heavy, but let's just go straight in. So this is from TMZ. It says here, Rashad Brooks, DA charges shooting cop with felony murder, death penalty on the table. So I'm sure some of you guys are aware of the racial tensions that are brewing in the United States, you know, off the back of the, you know, heinous killing of George Floyd. And I guess um, police across the United States are on, um, are trying to be on their best behavior, but judging by some of the videos we've seen, you know, it's not really been working, but they're meant to be on their best behavior. They're, they're, on, they're on tender hooks. The public perception, the public sentiment towards police is probably an all time low. Um, so, you know, they have to be careful in their encounters. And I'm assuming, you know, they've been told by their police chiefs to be mindful of that. But unfortunately, a really terrible incident happened with this guy called um, Rish, uh, Rashad Brooks who from what I've seen on the video was, you know, uh, asleep in his car, having drunk a bit too much. Um, somebody from the Wendy's car park where he was sitting at called the police. The police came, they had some sort of cordial chat. While you were sitting in the car, it just it, it kind of rolled out to him getting out, having a breathalyzer test to ascertain how of us, how, how, how drunk he was. He didn't pass the breathalyzer test, of course, and then that's when the whole encounter went left. And then somehow within that encounter going left in a tussle this Rashad Brooks guy ends up um, overpowering two police officers which is already you know a bit of a concern um, he ends up then uh, stealing one of the police officers taser I'm not sure if he went for the gun instead but you can only get a taser he takes a taser tries to run away turns back to point to shoot at one of the police officers misses and as he's running away they shoot him as he's running right I think three or four times and obviously that's not seen now um, don't get me wrong, heinous crime, right? Disgusting. Um, I think the tendency for police officers in the States to initially just engage in firing somebody, especially when you're running away, is insane. I've never really understood this idea that, you know, you can't run away from the police. The police aren't allowed to, like, chase you. Every sort of TV program I've watched that concerns police, part of the, you know, part of the... F part of the plot line especially when it's beat cops or cops that work the street right is that they always are on, they're pursuing um, witnesses to a crime pursuing you know people of interest or something they're pursuing them at feet sometimes you know on foot running or whether it's in a car but you always see some sort of chase but when you actually see the videos of police encounters it's always very stationary they don't like to move too much like it seems that they get annoyed when you resist and then you make them have to work which is very bizarre um, and of course, there's this idea that whenever you lift your hands to a police officer in the United States, there's also this idea that, you know, you are encouraging them or you're giving them license to them to shoot you back in, you know, to shoot you uh, back in, you know, as a response. And that which I never got to. It's as if like, you know, you can't punch a police officer and then they just punch you back. That should be an option, right? If you punch police officer, they should have to punch you back as many as many times as they want until you're subdued. But it's the idea that if you, if they if you punch them, they can take their gun out and point it in your face. It's really, really mad. So that's the part of the thing that's really bizarre. And that's the part where I sometimes think as tired as I am talking about race, I think in America it's different. They haven't really reckoned with their, you know, dirty or the, the, the black cloud that hangs over them when it comes to slavery they haven't really come to terms of it um it sort of just went away uh, it sort of just ended right and then they thought they could just get over it but clearly they haven't there's a lot of ptsd there and i guess for some police officers they have an intrinsic fear of black people it seems like because you know if you see that encounter of rashad brooks and that dude happened to be white i don't know it's sad bad to say but maybe if he did try and reach for the guy's taser he would have got died too but i'm not too sure if they would have even got that far i'm not too sure if they would have you know there's plenty of opportunities the police officers could have just you know took the guy in their car and dropped him off home left the car in the car park told him to get a coffee and have a shower there's plenty of options there's plenty of ways this could have ended without lethal force but you know what do we know so this is an article from tmz it says that Rish, uh, what's the update here I want to say updates from here. Say, uh, da, da, da. yeah, 
let's read the whole thing. It says, Rashad's wife, Tamika Miller, has addressed the media and thanked everyone for their support. She got emotional when revealing how she heard the news of the charges. Um, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms released a statement as well, saying, it's my hope that justice will be served, not only for the family of Mr. Brooks, but for the victims of the families of the other use of force victims waiting to be resolved. The district attorney, Michael Dollison, prays remain with the family of Mr. Brooks. It continues here, it says, the former Atlanta cop who shot Rashad Brooks in the back and killed him has now been charged with felony murder and the cop's partner has agreed to testify against him Oof, that's when it gets dark i guess this is where he's got a point maybe there's a history of misconduct which is, again is an interesting one it seems like in the like more so than any other job right most jobs if you turn up late if you don't do your work if you're a bad t colleague or teammate you get let go pretty quickly right especially if you haven't passed your probation like they don't really cut you any slack and they're like look get out we've got some free work out of you for a month and a half or two months now you can just go um but a police force seems to be one of the only places where you can really get away with murder like you can do whatever you that like you can make mistake after mistake fuck up what the fuck up and instead of letting you go they just move you somewhere else right move you to maybe another precinct that's uh i don't know less work or move you to a desk job or you're just filing papers and writing reports or whatever it may be right doing some clerical work but there's rarely times where somebody's just bad at their job and they just get let go i'm sure it happens but optically from out from the outside looking in um the optics don't look good in it you see somebody that you know is involved with a fatal shooting and then you look at the rap sheet and it's never a one-off it's always like history of, of abuse history of neglect history of overstepping the mark history of just you know just being an absolute cunt basically um and the fact that his partner is going to testify against him is maybe a changing in the tide of the police force or maybe just you know the partner having enough and saying oh this guy's a fucking psycho it continues, it says, um, the Fulton District Attorney, Paul Howard, announced 11 charges against Gareth Rolfe, including multiple acts of aggravated assault. Howard may particularly notice that Rolfe kicked Brooks while he was lying dying. God almighty, he kicked him. This reminds, it's like, sometimes you don't want to be that guy, but fuck, it's like, um, what's, what's that show? What was it called? Watchmen. It's like the same thing, isn't it? All right? Where, you know, spoiler alert, but in Watchmen, the police force are essentially like, you know, um, have been infiltrated by, or they, where they, the, the police chief is an undercover white supremacist, right? And, you know, he has some of his lieutenants are actually in the police force. So there's this, like, you know, it's, 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 it's as systemic as it can get, you know, the racism towards black people. So you can only imagine what it must be like in some, in some, police stations in the united states some pre six in various states like it's just nuts um it says howard made it clear as conti articles continue said he does not believe that rolf feared for his life in any way shape or form howard noted brooks had been cordial cooperative and calm for more than 41 minutes the da said rolf was not motivated by fear but rather another type of emotion howard didn't specifically say which emotion but he did say you can hear rolf right after the shoot say i got him god almighty it's especially significant you have a cop uh Devin Brunson has turned state evidence. He will make a statement soon on what happened, but the DA says psychologically he's not up for it right now. Howard has been charged with Brunson with the grip of assault. He's on video stepping on Brooks' shoulder. He's also been charged with failure to render timely aid. He could face more than 20 years in prison, but it's almost certain he'll get away less for cooperating. The video incident shows Mr. Brooks was shot by Roth during the chase when the Wendy's car park lot after Brooks had obtained one of the officer's tasers and was tempted to flee the rest following a breathalyzer test. <sighs> Lessons learned from this. Number one. I guess no actually spare a thought for whoever at wendy's called the police in the first place spare a thought for them how bad they must be feeling now right because i'm sure it happens all the time right um vagabonds or just people in general sleep in a car park somewhere of a corporate you know uh place of business they don't want that kind of riffraff in their car park it's their property it is what it is private property call call the cops um they come over and i'm sure most of the time nine times out of ten they knock on the window say hey can you keep keep it moving guy and you go no trouble and i'm sure for the people working there it's also a benefit that you get all the cars clear from the car park so when you're leaving work at the end of your shift you don't have any shifty motherfuckers hanging around so you know it's all well and good but look how it ended but i think lessons to be learned from this i guess for people or for 
black people in general maybe not this yeah maybe in worldwide considering most of the some of these things that have been happening we've been seeing over the internet is there has to be some sort of adherence some sort of understanding about how to conduct yourself with police um not that you know we, we're not too sure if this would have happened regardless of if uh mr brooks ran away but there has to be some sort of um education when it comes to ha knowing how to get arrested knowing how to conduct yourself knowing how to um what's that word called like because it's really the police's job to do it but knowing how to de-escalate a situation right knowing how to take all the threat um that you may pose a piece of away from it right to really kind of reduce yourself to like a nothing right to offer no threat whatsoever no intimidation no weird looks no kind of posture just complete submission just so you can go home and see your kids so that should be the most that should be the paramount thing in the brain now of course it doesn't you know more blame should be placed on the police officers right they are there to uphold the law and they're there to protect and serve cool don't get me wrong but there's probably it's probably it was probably take a lot longer to reform the police force in the states um than people actually think especially if they go on banning around this defund the police nonsense so the best thing you can do is kind of you know do the one thing that you can change is change your behavior when you do get arrested um just make it completely just make it as easy for yourself as possible to get out of that situation alive because it is a matter of life and death it's fucking real out there for real do you know what i mean because police officers have guns so any wrong move any kind of misstep it could you know result in you losing your life there's no joke they and they're not trained to like for the seat for the looks of it, it does look like police officers are trained to subdue even with a gun they're trained to kill if they feel that their threats their life's in danger their threat they're trained to neutralize the target you know free shots center of mass sort of thing they're not aiming for the shoulder or for the leg or whatever they're aiming for your you know right center mass so yeah man but unfortunate story all around really to be honest no one really comes out of this winning to be fair in, in these situations